be, why can't we get gain riches like Job has? Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that, that's why they would speak the way they did. Mm-hmm. Will you speak unrighteously for God and talk deceitfully for him? Now, you're already speaking unrighteously about me. Now you're speaking on me. You're acting like you're speaking on behalf of God. Now, well, here's one thing that I'm very clear about. When you represent the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you need to represent him in a spirit of excellence. Why? Because he always did that with us. Amen. In his representation of the Father. He did not do anything that brought discredit to his Father. Because he had respect for his father and he had love for his father. When you have those two things in operation, then you should absolutely be able to represent him in the spirit of excellence and in the right way. Obviously, these two, these, these three friends of Job, they didn't have that. They didn't have that understanding. They didn't have that even relationship with God that they would want to represent him in the right way. And so Job says, uh, Will you show partiality to him, be unjust to me, in order to gain favor for him? So what do you think you're going to do? You think you're going to play God? You think you can play God and, 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 and uh, uh, play to his ego, you know, and, and, and pump him up so that, he can, so that you can look good in his eyes? That ain't happening. <laughs> God knows all things. He is omniscient. There ain't nothing that escaped the eyes of God. Uh, King David made note of that. He says, you know, when I go to a high place, you're there. I go to a low place. You're there. There's no way I can go that, I, that would allow me to escape you. And, 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 and also knowing this, that the very hairs on our heads are numbered. You can't surprise God with nothing. Absolutely nothing. And you should, certainly can't smooth talk your way into God's good graces. <laughs> We can't, oh Lord have mercy. Some of us believe we can do that. Some of us believe we can smooth talk God like we smooth talk one another sometimes. Think we can play God like that, get all up in God's ear and start talking what I call the yin yang. You know, it's like a song that goes back and forth, yin yang and back and forth all up in God's ear. God ain't listening to that crap. If you come to him, you have to come to him in a certain kind of way. First of all, you got to come reverencing him, respecting him. And if you have respect for him, you wouldn't try to play him. Lord have mercy. And oh yeah, will you show partiality to him, be unjust to me in order to gain favor with him. Now, if that's the way that you think that you need to go, then you need to understand something about God. You, you come into him the absolutely wrong way. God himself is no respect to persons. And if he ain't no respect to persons, he ain't going to listen to no nonsense about somebody coming and trying to show favor or, or show a, 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 a particular light to themselves over somebody else. Because let me tell you something. One of the things that you have to understand that when you take, when you believe that you're presenting yourself in a certain kind of way because you don't want nobody to see all that negative. If I allowed, if you allow me to speak for me in my flesh, you ain't going to hear nothing but good things about Arthur. Oh yeah, I'm going to say all the right words. I'm going to have every I dotted, every T cross. But know this, the Bible says there's no good thing that dwells within our flesh. And if there's no good thing that dwells within our flesh, then why would we think that we can go and present to God, that uh, present God a, 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 a picture of us that just don't exist? Lord have mercy. Be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. You're going to reap what you have sown. Mm -hmm. Would it be profitable for you if he should investigate your tactics with me, there you go. <laughs> I don't think it would be good for them folks that come and try to uh, present themselves in a light that just ain't them. Because if God investigated their tactics, and know this, the Bible says this, the heart of man is deceitful and wicked in all its ways. Who can know that thing? I, the Lord, I search the heart 
And I'm going to reward you according to the motives that proceed from your heart. So what God is letting you know that, yeah, you can say all you want to say, but while you're saying all of that, I'm going right to the source of what's coming up out of your mouth, and I'm looking to see why you're saying what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to know it because, uh, 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 yeah, I'm I'm going to know it because (laughs) when God looks at your heart, you better believe you're under you come under the uh, under the eye of God, he ain't missing nothing. Amen. We think we can hide some stuff or, or cover up some stuff when when we present it to one another, but that ain't happening with God because he sees all, he knows all. He will surely re- oh, oh yeah, oh or one or as one who deceives and mocks a man, do you deceive and mock and mock mock him? I just told you, be you not deceived, God is not mocked. You're going to reap what you've sown. Amen. But that's what happens when we get into our mind of ours and start thinking that we can do stuff. Uh, we can play God like we play in one another. Uh-huh. And that we can come to God and smooth talk him. You know, there's, some, there's a story in the Bible uh, of some smooth talking that went on. And I'm going to read that into your hearing real quick. Let us go to the book of Daniel. Let's go to the book of Daniel. And I think I want to start. I want to start with the first verse in the sixth chapter. Uh, I'm reading all of that just to get to the point, the, the, the scripture that I want to get to. It pleased King Darius, successor to Belshazzar, to set over the kingdom 120 satraps who should be in charge throughout all the kingdom. And over them, three presidents of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might give account to them, that the king should have no loss or damage. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presidents and the satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now note this, this sounds like somewhat of the beginning of Job. Uh, Here's another man, uh, 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 excellent spirit found within him. Then the presidents. And the satraps sought to find find occasion to bring accusation against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion of fault, for he was faithful, nor was there any error of fault found in him. Mm -mm -mm. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion to bring accusation against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and satraps came tumultuously together to the king and said to him, Watch this, y'all. King Darius lived forever. That's the beginning of the play. All the presidents of the kingdom, the deputies and the satraps, the the counselors and the governors, have consulted and agreed that the king should establish a royal statute and make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days except of you, O king, shall be cast in the den of lions. Now, not only did they start to to play the king, but you know what? What a tangled web we weave once we set out to deceive. That what they started out to do was wrong. On top of that, first off, they told a lie. They started, yeah, after they just tried to play the king, then they went right into a lie. And how do I know they went right into the lie? They said, verse 7 says, all the presidents of the kingdom, the deputies and the satraps, the councils and the governors have consulted and agreed that the king should establish a royal statute and make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days except the view. That's a little G-O-D, y'all. O king shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, let me show you where this is a lie. Um, verse 2. And over them, three presidents of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might give account to them that the king should have no loss. Now, understand this, and that decree that they came up with, because remember, the Bible said that it pleased King Darius' successor to set over the kingdom 120 satraps who should be in charge throughout all the kingdom. And over over them, three presidents of whom Daniel was the one, that these satraps might give account to King Darius. Oh, no. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Then, third verse. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presence and the satraps because the experience was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. King Darius had decided that Daniel, a slave, was going to be in charge of everybody else. 
So in order to ensure that, uh, that these here, these here uh, 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 conspirators, in order to ensure that they got the king to do what they wanted them to do by playing him, they sealed the deal by say, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be altered or changed. Yeah. That's what happens when people try to play you. Yeah, yeah. Now let's go back to Job, the 13th chapter, and see if we can't finish that up. Amen, amen. I got to get back to Job, the 13th chapter. Here we are. Here we are. Back to Job, the 13th chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one who deceives and mocks a man, do you receive? He will surely reprove you if you do secretly show partiality. Oh, yeah. He will not absolutely reprove you because what is made, uh, what is brought, uh, what is hidden in the dark will be made brought manifest to the light, and God will absolutely deal with you. Uh, uh, and how do I know that to be so? Well, he, he ain't too keen. He ain't too keen about folks uh, that 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 think that they're doing things in his behalf, and it absolutely ain't working out like that. That's not really what it is. He told. Uh, 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 Religious leaders of his day, he called them the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, the Sanhedrin. He called them uh, hypocrites and vipers. They honored him with their lips, but their heart was far from him. And then he had an occasion to speak to one person. Uh, uh, well, no, he spoke to well, he spoke to many. <laughs> that's as the scripture says. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter, twenty-first verse. Not everyone who says to me, "Lord, Lord," will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I will say to them openly, publicly, yeah, you do stuff in the dark and you do things that are deception, but God deals with you openly and publicly. I never knew you. Depart from me. You who act wickedly disregarding my commands. Uh Uh-huh, moving on, we're almost done. Shall not his majesty make you afraid? Should not your all for him restrain you? And that's the sad thing, because many people, many people do not understand what it means to have the fear of God. And that reverential fear is that you need to respect the one that the Bible says not only can destroy you and, and, and destroy you uh, 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 physically, but can destroy you spiritually as well. Body, your body and soul. You can, you absolutely can die. You will. Well, the Bible says there's a time to live and a time to die. That's this life. But when you operate in a in 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 a, in an area where you ought not operate in, that is when you operate outside of the will of God and you disobey his commandments, and you transgress against his laws, then you are in disobedience or in sin. And the Bible says this, the wages of sin is death. Now, now, if you do what you're supposed to do, you will enter into his kingdom, into his rest, into heaven. That place Jesus Christ told his disciple, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But, if you fail to do the right thing to enter into that kingdom and into one of the mansions, then guess what? God has a place for you. Broad is the way to destruction. Many travel on that road. That's why Matthew seven twenty one through 23 reads the way it does because the Bible says, many will come to me in, the, in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have I not done this in your name? But they were operating uh, in a manner that was not pleasing to God. Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, I were, if I were you, uh, uh, I would have some fear, reverential fear for the God of all, of, yeah, for the Lord of Lord and King of King. He's sovereign over everything. That includes us. Amen. Let me move on. Your memorable sayings are proverbs of ashes, valueless. Your defenses are defenses of clay and will crumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people think that they can uh, present a case that would allow them to uh, 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 escape the wrath and judgment of God. Okay, well, let me tell you something. What worked for O.J. Simpson, y'all? Um, you know, the trial of O.J. Simpson. 
uh, who was accused of killing his uh, wife, Nicole Brown, and, and her boyfriend, uh, he got off. That ain't happening with you or I. <laughs> we ain't getting off. Uh,